but I wasn't really sure that I was going to be selected for the scholarship because there was someone uh, who had been called also for that interview whom I thought that if the worst comes to the worst, they're going to take that person, not me. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Okay, so today we have a guest here, an incoming student that, you know, just won the MySys scholarship. So she's going to talk to us about how she was able to actually apply, which university she's coming to study at, and how she actually, you know, won the MySys scholarship. So please do introduce yourself. Uh, thank you so much and for hosting me to your channel. My name is uh, Tulana Sejani. I'm from Lesotho. And I'll be an incoming student in the University of Messina. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with us. What are you coming to study in Italy, first of all? Okay. So I'm coming to study Master's in Data Science. Okay. Yeah. At the University of Messina's admission area. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what made you choose Italy? And also what made you choose the University of Messina? Okay. So I chose Italy because of like the... It's always been a dream of mine to be in Europe. So I saw like find a lot of content and someone who was consistent in what they were doing. That was through your YouTube channel. So that's when I decided, you know what? I need someone who is very consistent in what uh, I need to do with all the processes to go and study abroad because you find that you find content from somewhere and then some people just turn up to leave some things. Uh, have done you know because we have so many questions about what you need to do and stuff like that so i only chose italy because i was able to find the right resources that is through your channels to get to know what i needed to do and it was very efficient for me and i'm, I'm grateful for that okay we thank god we thank god we are going to go to the my seat scholarship how did you hear about it like how did you hear about the MySys scholarship? Okay, so I heard about the MySys scholarship through your channel. I don't want to lie, that's just through your channel. So I watched the video and I realized, oh, the process is that easy. It doesn't even need the e -lens. So I was like, okay, let me just try it out. I actually just tried it, tried it out, I think, uh, two days before the deadline. That's when I applied. So... But I already, I already had everything, every document that I needed maybe to apply for that scholarship because I already had my motivation letters and everything right in place. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's good. That's so good. Okay. So what did you include in your motivation letter? Because basically this is a merit-based scholarship and you actually need to be presenting something good for, you know, for them to pick you because there were so many applicants who weren't picked. So what, how did you kind of like compile or how did you write your motivation letter? What did you include in it? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I included the, my background. So I graduated from, uh, I, I did my undergraduate as a, a software engineer. So mm -hmm. I, I I included my background and my passion for uh, software de development and uh, what I'm currently doing, of which I'm currently working uh, uh, at the company where I am building uh, softwares that are yeah, that are gonna help my country towards uh, solving the f financial technology, coming up with financial technology solutions. So. I included that in my application of what I'm currently doing and my background of my studies and how I came to love uh, software engineering from a very young age. And I included that I wanted to um, go uh, and further my studies through data science because uh, I found that it's going to be compatible with what I'm currently doing and to bring back solutions, to, uh, financial solutions to my country uh, after I've uh, obtained that degree yeah wow that's good that's really really good so currently um you know first of all let's talk about you getting shortlisted for the micey interview how did you feel about it yeah. how did it go what questions were you asked 
So I was, I don't know if everything happened really fast in my side of the country because the time I was checking up with other people in the group, in that Telegram group, people were like, ah, you've gotten an interview. So I was like, kind of worried, like, oh, why is everything going fast like this fast? Because we actually, uh, I know about five people that had applied for the very same scholarship in my country, but I was the only one who was selected for the scholarship, who who got the scholarship. They only got one person. So uh, I was very grateful. But uh, basically the questions that I can say they asked, they weren't that difficult. Those questions about tell us who you are, why Italy, why do you want the scholarship, and what are your long term goals? Basically, it's the same thing that you wrote in your motivation letter, but you just need to like elaborate it more to them. And there'll be some few questions that will pop up here and there during the interview, but it was just quite smooth. If you know what you wrote in your motivation letter, uh, then you will know how to answer all those questions. Oh, okay, okay. So did they contact you by email for the interview or how did it go? How did it go about that? For me to know that I got just listed for an interview? Yes. Oh, okay. First of all, I got a call and they told me that they're going to send me an email uh mm-hmm. to schedule my interview and then we did our interview on microsoft teams on teams yeah so after the interview like how did you feel like were you kind of like sure that you were really going to get you're going to be selected let me just say i did i did my research before i could i could go for an interview obviously i prepared myself so those main four questions that I that they asked me were the very same questions that I came across during my research. So it wasn't uh, something that I was like uh, picking from afar that this might be the questions that I'm going to be asked. And I was very grateful that they were the exact same questions because I feel like for most scholarships, those are the questions that I that should be asked. You just need to show confidence and show them that you know what you're talking about and you know what you're saying and, you know, yeah. So that was what happened for me. But I wasn't really sure that I was going to be selected for the scholarship because there was someone uh, who had been called also for that interview whom I thought that if the worst comes to the worst, they're going to take that person, not me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, like, how did you know about the other people that, like, you know, that applied in your country? How did you know about that? Actually, they're my friends. (laughs) <laughs> they were my friends they were my friends we graduated from the same school but uh we did the, uh, we did different pieces so yeah that's how i knew about them we all applied for the same uh scholarship and yeah wow and none of them were selected you were the only person that was selected from your country yeah i was the only person who was selected from my country because I think when I got the second email, I was told that uh, the first email was just explaining the details and the rules and regulations, what I'm mm-hmm. expected to do, not to do. And then the, they called me the following day. Okay. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to answer my phone. And then I emailed them back to tell them that I had missed their call. And they sent me an email telling me mm-hmm. that they were just calling me to congratulate me on receiving the scholarship since I'm the only person who had been selected wow. for the scholarship. So what were some of the rules and regulations that they communicated to you through email, like, you know, about the scholarship? Do you care to share? Okay, some of the rules that I was told, that I have to remember because there's a lot, uh, one of them was that I <laughs> one of them was that I sh- shouldn't try to get any other uh, scholarship that is in Italy besides the mm-hmm. one that I have they're the one that I'm supposed mm-hmm. to take care of everything since that scholarship yeah that, I think that's the one that I remember from there it was the fact that those, was those uh, rules that had to do with <laughs> managing the funds to mm-hmm. give it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After they communicated to you that, you know, you are the only person that has been picked from your home country, 
did they kind of like send any letter through mail to prove that? Because, you know, during your visa application, you need the proof of funds. Um, yeah. So did they send any letter or anything officially to confirm that you've actually gotten the scholarship and then what the amount and what is actually going to cover? They haven't sent me that letter as of yet because I got the scholarship actually before I got admission to the school that I'm going to. That's really weird. And <laughs> and um so since I had uh, when I was when I was applying to the for the scholarship, I had selected a different university from the one that I got admission to currently. I informed them that I got admission to a different university uh, besides the one that I had, I had picked during my application. Okay. So um, I had to email the, the, the people from the, the scholarship, that email that you gave us, if we needed some modification and stuff through our portal. Okay. And yeah. mm -hmm. I used the email to inform them. So the embassy told me that, uh, you know what, you need to contact those people to tell them that you need to uh, change the university since it's no different from the one that you had initially picked so mm -hmm. uh, if i informed them and then they were like no it's not a problem just talk to the embassy to just give you the letter and they should just change everything since the system currently is down so i informed them on friday evening so since mm -hmm. it's uh they always communicate with me on a day-to-day -day basis to check up on me on the processes that i'm i'm still doing currently uh they mm -hmm. um probably tomorrow i'm gonna receive that letter because that was the only thing that was remaining i was afraid that they were they might revoke my scholarship because i had not gotten admission to any school so they told me no we're not going to do that <laughs> we're not going to do that we're not even authorized to do that the scholarship is yours <laughs> we can't do anything the scholarship is yours so yeah wow yeah wow that is so good okay so for those who do not know um, do you still remember what the MICE scholarship actually covers? Yes, so mm -hmm. that was something that we, we are always talking about with, 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 with the embassy. That's what I'm always emailing them about. So basically, the scholarship covers, they, they're going to give me a monthly allowance of 900 euros. Mm -hmm. And they cover health insurance for my entire mm -hmm. stay in Italy. Mm -hmm. and um, they're gonna cover my tuition fee mm -hmm. and that's it yes. the flight yes. visa the accommodation it's all on me it's all on you it's all on you it's good that you're sharing that because um and i want people actually think that it covers your flights to the country too and you know and all of that but then it's good you've actually clarified that it only covers it only covers the stuff that you're going to get that of you know basically your medical bills and then that of tuition okay so these are the three areas or yeah. the three things that the scholarship covers one thing that uh, you should be aware of is that uh, i was also informed that it's not like i'm gonna be given the money immediately the allowance immediately it's gonna take some time mm -hmm. before i can receive it so obviously before you go you need to have some funds some that you funds. can support yourself with. So I was told yes. that um, maybe I can ask for some family members to give me a loan, then I'll pay them back because I'm going to get the money well listed in, uh, what you call, uh, if perhaps I arrive in, in October since my uh, lecture was studying in October. Okay. I'm going to skip about two to three months before I get the allowance. And then the, once they give me the allowance, they're going to multiply it by three. It means that 900 euros is going to be multiplied by three or two, depending mm. on uh, when I'll get that allowance. So I guess even if you ask for a loan from a family member or friend, you can still pay them back the money. Yeah. 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 So okay, so so yeah, yeah, that's true. So basically, since it yeah. was the embassy themselves, that actually do contact students regarding this or even with the interview. Um, I think during a proof of funds, because you know, basically this year, there's this whole situation where it's either a family member, I don't know how it works in Lesotho, but then is it only family members and yourself that can support your studies like for proof of funds? 
how does it work in Lesotho? On my side, since I got a scholarship, I, I didn't really look into that part, but I was looking towards just getting a bank loan and then, yeah, using that one for myself. Because I'm already working, so I can use my own bank statement as proof of funds, I guess. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that actually um, makes sense. That actually makes sense. So how do you feel? How I'm excited. Feel? I can't wait to get to Italy. I can't wait to... Get like I can't wait. It's like it's a dream come true for me. I don't want to lie. It's a dream right. come true. I'm so excited. I can't. I can't wait because this was something that I was expecting. But you know, I thank God. I thank. I really do thank God. Yeah. Can only be God that has made this come come true and happen. True. Yeah, and it can only be God. It can only be God because this is actually going to make your studies easier. When you come in, you just have to look for accommodation. And I'm sure, have you contacted the university about that? Like, finding accommodation in Mesna after you get in? Yes, I did. So, they were the ones that had suggested that at least book a BNB before mm -hmm. you come here. And then once you're here, you'll be able to find accommodation easily. And there were some groups that I was they suggested for me to mm -hmm. uh, go into to find accommodation mm -hmm. and some links, you know, some mm -hmm. um, the websites that I can go to to try to find accommodation. But then it seemed like I needed to be there in person because they were like, you know what, you need to view the apartment before you can even try to pay for it or sign a contract yeah. or anything. Because like, it's a, yeah, you're going to be staying there for quite a while. So you don't just need to take a drastic measure because you just need accommodation. Yeah. And I'm just so excited for for you. I am sure that this is actually going to be a good experience. And I just cannot wait for you to come in, start your studies, like be able because the um, education is like top notch, is quality. So you also have to be prepared because like the system the educational system we are used to in africa is completely going to be different from um what is here okay so you come you study you maintain your scholarship when you are done like after the first um period you do reapply you can during your second year you can either reapply to my c or reapply to you know the original scholarship in um you know where Messina is located and then basically you just study make the needed grades and then you go back home and use the knowledge you know to improve things around you which is actually really good yeah thank you i really do want to give you a shout out to you because you are the you're the person that really helped me to get this honestly speaking but when i'm there i would definitely like to go out at least for lunch or dinner Definitely get in touch and then we'll see what to do. I'm very grateful. I'm very yes, grateful. Uh, oh, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. I'm sure so many people are going to benefit from that. And then your story is going to serve as a motivation to others. Because I remember the initial stage while you were talking about, like, you just heard of it and then you applied. You made mention of the fact that your documents were ready, like you already prepared documents okay so that means you had you had done research like you were ready to kind of like put in the effort okay which is actually really really good so many people just jump on the opportunity with that research and then at the end of the day it becomes a bit complicated so thank you so much for sharing that okay so finally what do you have to say to students that actually did apply for the scholarship the MICE scholarship but then you know they're not winning, and then also students that will be applying for next year. What are your final words to them? What encouragement do you have, you know, to share with them? So my final words would be prepare now because uh, this journey that we are taking of scholarships, it's it's it's, it's a journey that needs some uh, serious serious preparation. You don't just wake up one morning and decide to go overseas. You don't do that. So I would advise people that are going to apply for the scholarship or any other scholarship uh, to, first of all, uh, try to focus on writing a proper motivation letter 
for them and uh, try to get as enough funds as they can before they can start applying for any opportunity overseas for that matter because uh, I don't believe there are people that will require you to enter their country without really knowing how you're going to be uh, surviving in their country. So you need to have funds for that, at least. Uh, usually they want uh, about uh, six months bank statement and so So try to work on that before you can apply for the scholarship so that you know that once you win the scholarship, uh, you're you're set, you're on track with everything so that you don't end up getting disappointed at the end of the day after waiting over six months to just get a rejection from visa or anything close to that. So thank you for sharing that and thank you for coming on to kind of like share this with you know everyone with your other incoming students as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>